Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk about the cost of being healthy and free from pharmaceuticals. And the reason this video is coming about is because my vi the video that Patrick and I shot back in 2018 about how we got off the thyroid medication, and I gave a lot of suggestions. I, I went through what we did. I also suggested some other ideas. And one lady came in and said that, you know, she's only living on $720 a month and she can't afford all the supplements and healthy food when she can get her thyroid medicine for free. And, and I understand this question and in no way mean to belittle this person. I think it's a common mentality that I once used to have many years ago that trying to be healthy is expensive, but it's because of what we're constantly being sold that we have to do. Now, I think I mentioned in the video that you may not need to take added supplements, and especially if you're on a budget, that's not the best way to start anyway. While yes, certain supplements, when you're trying to heal your body from whatever it is so that you can then get off the medication, getting more of that can be very helpful, but I think it's best to focus on, and I come back to this quite often, that at least, especially for the, as far as your cost goes, to focus on getting your nutrients from your food. Now, yes, I do understand that our modern day farming practices, and even for those of us who grow our own food, we still can't be guaranteed that they're as nutrient dense as they once used to be back before all the pollutants in the air and in the soil and in the water. So I also am not against supplementation and myself, I do do that. Uh, there's certain supplements I only take at certain times. There's some I try to stay consistent on and especially during our dark times of the year and, or when I'm not able to get outside much, I do take vitamin D3 because sun here is actually kind of rare and so we need that extra supplementation. And then there's certain times when we're getting ill or trying to prevent illness that you know, taking some vitamin C and other things can be helpful, but you can still try your best to focus on getting your nutrients from your food. And in fact, I have a recipe video on how to make a multi-mineral vitamin extract. And I think it's in, I'll link to whichever video it is. I think the recipe is in another video where I'm talking about extracts in general. And I don't always think to take that, though it's a good and very cheap way to up the amount of vitamins and minerals you're getting in your diet, very inexpensive. But it is a good option for those who are trying to find a more budget-friendly way to get added vitamins and minerals into their diet that doesn't require a whole lot of work. You can also make your own vitamin capsules per se by taking various different nutrient-dense herbs and greens and so on, dehydrating them up, powdering them, and then encapsulating them if that is easier for you. So, you know, and turmeric is a good one. Moringa, these are some really great ones to take. And I have videos on these as well, which I'll link to down below. So talking about the thyroid video in particular, I talked about a lot of the stuff that we eliminated. Some of it we either just cut back on or cut back for a time while we were trying to get our bodies to heal and some things we eliminated altogether like fluoride. Now that one's gonna be a little bit harder financially to pull off if your city water is fluoridated. Uh, if you don't have fluoridated city water, you might be fine. Uh, you're still gonna have other chemicals in it, but fluoride is one of the big things that can really damage your thyroid and make it sluggish. So. I'd, I'd suggest looking into, if you don't know if your city fluoridates or not, call them or email them or something and find out. And if they do, though it can cost some money to get there, it really is gonna be one of the biggest steps you can take is finding some other way that you can get water that you're gonna take, ingest, that is not fluoridated, whether it be investing in an expensive fluoride filter or doing like we did and start a water, a rainwater collection, which we've been doing for about 10 years now, the rainwater collection. Then we just filter that with a regular Berkey type filter. And yes, I know all the stuff going on about Berkey, but 
I know we've been happy with it and it's worked very well for us just to get the contaminants that can be in the rainwater out of there. But we don't have to worry about fluoride. Fluoride is a lot smaller. I have, in fact, I have a video I did about fluoride and why it's important to get it out of your water and not ingest it. That I'll link to down below, so I won't go into all that here. And that one does cost some money to get going if you have to, if, you, if your city water's fluoridated and you don't have any other way. And I don't trust the bottled waters in the store either. A lot of those are fluoridated too or have other chemicals in them. Let's look at the other things that you can do that don't cost any money. Stop using Teflon pants. If you're eating any kind of brassicas, you can still enjoy these, but do not eat them raw. It's as simple as that. Make sure you're always cooking them. Do not eat raw cruciferous vegetables, whether it be kale, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, and so on, because of the goitrogens in those. So you just gotta cook them. Make sure they're well cooked and you can still eat those. And that's free, or you know, other than the cost of running the energy to cook these items. There's other things you can also cut that will help, especially when you're starting trying to heal your body, consider, going a little more gluten-free if you're not already because even if you're not gluten sensitive when you're trying to heal your body this is something that you can do that can help your thyroid heal itself and these are things that don't have to be a forever thing i don't worry about gluten anymore i only did it for a short time while i was giving my thyroid a chance to heal and these are steps you should be putting in place before you even start to wean yourself off of the medication and that's going to apply towards any medication. I'm talking about thyroid in particular. So if you're talking about other things like diabetes or high blood pressure or high cholesterol, which a lot of times those two things are just nothing but bunk to get you on a medication that's only going to make you more sick. So that's the other thing I wanted to bring up. The cost of being healthy does not have to be expensive. In fact, in the long run, even if you do have to make investments in a good water filter that will take out the fluoride or that you can collect rainwater and just filter that, if you have well water, you're probably fine. Or even if you do end up having to get supplements, in the long run, if you can go off the medication, even if it's free now, even if it doesn't cost you anything because maybe your insurance covers it, well, what other kind of things are gonna happen down the road? Because thyroid medication has been proven to cause other health ailments down the road. It may, may take quite a few years, but I just recently learned that it's actually contributing to more people becoming diabetic, is being on thyroid medication for 10, 15, 20 years. And same thing goes with blood pressure medication and cholesterol medication, which most people, I'm not going to say all, even though I believe for the most part it is all people, but at least most people do not need to be on either one of those. There's other things you can do to help balance these correctly. And don't forget that that our blood pressure needs to be able to regulate itself. So it needs to go high when it needs to go high, low when it needs to go low. And if it's chronically high, that means you have something else going on in your body that needs to be taken care of. So you need to get to the root of the problem there. So what's happening is your body's adapting to whatever stress is being put on it from either external or internal. And so that's why it's high. So you don't want to treat your blood pressure. You want to treat whatever, take care of whatever's causing it to go up. And same thing with cholesterol. And remember, our brains are made up mostly of cholesterol, so you need cholesterol. And cutting back on cholesterol isn't necessarily going to help the problem. So it's, I did do some videos on, I, in fact, I have a whole series that I've been putting together a little at a time on a natural remedy list for various different ailments. So if it's diabetes or high cholesterol, I do have some on that. I, I have the thyroid videos. I have two of them out now. I have some on heart health, eye health, uh, even hair growth, something that things that can help with hair growth. It's a whole list that I'll link to the full playlist down below so you can go in there and then you can see the list of videos that fall in there and find the one that applies mostly to you. And also don't forget to read the comments because people will add some good information in there as well. 
And for all of those particular ones, I also provide a written list. So you can copy that and have it in your own documents. And then there's the, the things that you can do to, just to practicing a healthier lifestyle, like getting more movement, even if you're disabled and you're in a wheelchair, as long as you have movement of your arms or even some movement in your legs, you, there's things that you can do to get more movement that will help you to be healthier. And I've talked about that in other videos, like I believe in the one where I talk about exercise and ways to add more movement to your day, which I'll link to down below. And the, these are important. As long as you have any kind of mobility at all in any limb, find something that you can do that will help increase your heart rate and, and help build some muscle. Just having that muscle makes you healthier. I'm not talking about getting big and bulky and ugly looking. I'm talking about just the the right amount of muscle that you need for you having that will just make you healthier and, and actually causes you to burn more calories even while you sleep and no gym membership is required so you don't have to pay money for a gym membership just to find ways to add more movement to your life and eating healthy shouldn't have to be expensive but evaluate the foods that are, you are buying are you buying the pre processed foods that are loaded with chemicals that are very likely some of the contributing factors to whatever your health ailments are, then how about you cut all that out? It doesn't cost anything to cut that out and then find ways to make these things from scratch. Let's just go with something as simple. It's not the healthiest thing, but as simple as macaroni and cheese. Macaroni and cheese is one of those rare things that's actually not necessarily cheaper to make yourself but in the long run, it is because you're saving your health by not eating the processed junk that's loaded with all these preservatives. You're just taking some pasta and some cheese, making a cheese sauce out of that with a little flour and milk, and then pouring it on your macaroni and cheese and baking it. It's good, and you can add whatever spices and herbs to it you want. And that applies to any dish. And making your own bread is definitely less expensive than buying bread. And you know exactly what's going into it. You can make it all whole grains or you can get a good organic white flour if you want and that's gonna be healthier for you than buying it pre-made from the store and you're saving money. So no, it does not have to cost more. It can cost less if you know how to look at things. And some of the things that will cost more are often balanced out by making things from scratch and eventually going off the medications that for most people do cost money, even with insurance, they still have to pay some kind of copay. And then down the road, avoiding any future issues that may be caused by the medications because all of them cause other issues that then require more medication, that then require more medication, and so on and so forth. Once you get on that hamster wheel, you're gonna have to get off of it yourself because the doctors and the medical industry and the pharmaceutical companies are going to keep you on that hamster wheel and there will be no end until you die because the number one killer in the United States alone is pharmaceutical medications, even when properly prescribed and then taken as prescribed. They're still the number one killer in the just, United States. You're not going to hear that because there's a lot of money caught up in these companies. They want to keep you sick so that they can keep putting you on more medications. That's how they make their money and then the best thing you can do if you have any space whatsoever even if it's just a pot in a, or two in a windowsill start growing your own medicinal herbs there's lots of herbs that will do fine in a pot as long as you have a good south facing window you can put some herbs in a pot things like thyme and oregano and sage and so much more can do fine in a pot in a windowsill and these have medicinal properties that can help cleanse the body and prevent different illnesses. And they're naturally antiviral and antibiotic, which means you're avoiding taking those medications as well. So there's so much you can do, even if you're just in an apartment and any place you can find to grow something. Remember, we're growing everything that we grow right here on our little shy one third acre lot in a neighborhood. So our whole backyard is a garden. And it's something that we started small and we built upon a little at a time. It wasn't like we just suddenly had a whole bunch of money and just poured it into putting in a garden. No, we 
we did a little at a time. And a lot of it was work we did ourselves to save us money. And then same thing with the front yard, little at a time. Every year I find more ways to expand the garden out that way too. And the garden, the side yard over here, because we're, we're on a corner lot. So I, we've got a yard over there too. And I've got a, my West herb garden. I got a lot of my medicinal herbs growing in there as well. So I built upon things a little at a time and anyone can do that no matter how small their space is. You can, and the more you do this stuff, it's just like I'm always bringing up the paying off debt, getting out of debt. It is, applies in the same way. You know, once you start doing things, you start finding more ways to add to what you have and make the most out of the space you have with the little money that you have. And the more that you save money by not buying pre-processed foods or going out to eat, that's more money you can put into healthier foods like buying fresh fruits and vegetables and grass-fed beefs and organically raised chicken. You can do this and save money. It might just be you got to start small and then learn as you go. If you cut, you got to really evaluate your situation. Is there anything that you're paying for right now that you're, you're paying for on a regular basis? Is it some kind of membership subscription that you really could live without? Consider cutting that out and then using that money to put towards something that's healthier for you or to save up to be able to get yourself a, a filtration system to get the, the fluoride out of your water or to put in a rainwater system, which we did that all ourselves. And everything like all the barrels and the tanks that we have, we've all bought secondhand by hunting and searching and always keeping our eyes open and through the years have built on that. It just like we've done everything else. So this can be done. I think anyone can do it, even with as little as $721 a month. I believe everyone has something that if they really evaluated what they're spending their money on, that they could cut and replace it with something better. Or in other words, find ways to trade this bad thing over here that's not helping your health for this thing over here that is going to help you be healthier so that you don't have to stay on the medications. It does not have to be expensive. And then if down the road you feel like you need to add the supplements and maybe making the, the multi-mineral vitamin extract isn't working for you or even the capsules, then consider down the road, if you can free up more cash, you might be able to add that. And, and again, I got to stress this again, because a lot of people forget that what are the long-term effects of taking any kind of medication, especially any kind of synthetic medication, what are the long-term effects on your health? If it's going to cause you to be in the hospital more, have to go to the doctor more, get more blood tests, blood tests every single year that can be expensive. And a lot of times insurance doesn't cover much of that, if any of it, even if your medication is free, what about all this other stuff that you have to pay for just to be on the medication to supposedly be healthy when maybe you don't even need the medication in the first place? So really do your own research and learn and just evaluate everything that you have, everything that you can do and find ways to save money so that you can better get yourself in a healthier position and make the necessary changes to your diet and your lifestyle to get you there. Because I, I, I want to stress this as well. Some people think they can run out and buy this herb to replace this medication. Uh, most of the time it doesn't work that way. Just like with the thyroid, there's not one herb out there that's going to replace the thyroid hormone, but there's herbs and other things out there that will help your thyroid heal itself. Your body was made to be self-healing, and that's what the other thing we have to remember. So anyway, I hope I said everything I meant to say, but please, if there's anybody out there that has any more that they would like to add to this conversation, put that in comments below because this is a very important topic, and people who have these same questions need to learn so they can start getting themselves in a healthier position that will that doesn't have to cost them an arm and a leg or anything at all. So please put your, your ideas down below or even your own testimonies of what you did to get yourself in a healthier position. And don't forget to check out the links I'll be putting down below. And thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.